Hi everyone, welcome to the Introduction to Malware Threats webinar. My name is Ochi Bernades and I will be your moderator for this session. Let me just remind you that this session will be recorded. So before we start our fun and learning, just like any webinar that we always start here in Trend Micro, let's have a quick check in. For those who are joining us today, could you please say hi and shout out what organization you're from using the chat box. Just click on the chat button below your screen and make sure that you guys are sending it to everyone and not just the panelists. All right, so just tell us which organization that you guys are. <laughs> okay, I can see the chat and it's blowing up. I can see people from PUP Manila. We have SLU, we have um okay it's moving pretty fast so let me just see here um let me just scroll up we have people from tip manila again slu baguio Glo uh, global knowledge philippines we have pup san juan we have tesla rtc in la union hello good afternoon to you guys we have partido state university notre dame of takurong deped kalookan National, National University of Manila, good afternoon. We have uh, people from SDI, TIPQC represent. We have people from USD Legazpi City, Paragon ICC, BSU, uh, Baguio General Hospital and Medical Center. Oh, my sister is a resident there. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, not Baguio, but SLU, I forgot. Sorry, so good afternoon, everyone. It looks like we have a really good turnout. So uh, welcome to today's webinar. Before we start or before we proceed, let me just introduce our company. Who is Trend Micro? Trend Micro is a cybersecurity company that's been around for more than 30 years, leading the market with continuous innovations in virtualization, cloud, artificial intelligence, and IoT. Trend Micro has customers across the top Fortune 500, including eight of the top global Fortune 500. We are made up of 67,000 trenders who are passionate about making the world a safer and better place for everyone. And now for some reminders for our webinar, here are the tools that you can use to communicate with us. You will see both the chat and Q&A buttons at the bottom of your screen. And please use the chat section if you need to send us any feedback during the webinar. The Q&A section is where you can send in your questions. You can post them anytime throughout the webinar, but in order to manage our limited time, they will be answered towards the end. Basic questions will be answered via chat and others will be answered live during the Q&A. Kindly include the slide number in your questions so we can reply to them faster. A polling question will be posted from time to time. A separate window will pop up to show the poll. Just select your answer from the list and then click Submit. The results of the poll will be shown after. Just click Close when you're done viewing the results. At the end of the webinar, you will automatically be routed to a survey form. Kindly take the time to answer this short survey. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help improve our succeeding webinars. Those who answer the survey will receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar via email one week after the session. Access to the recording of this session, key takeaways, and succeeding webinar schedules will be announced on our Facebook pages at Trend Micro Careers Philippines and Click Right PH. You can also send us a message at um, our pages if you want to request a topic you would want us to cover in our next webinar. So please like and follow our pages. And now to present our speaker. Rafael Centeno is from the Trend Micro Research and is a graduate of De La Salle University, Manila. He has been with Trend Micro for seven years and he is a part of the threat hunting team where they provide proactive solutions to continuously protect Trend Micro customers. So for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our speaker, Rafael Centeno. Rap, I'll stop my sharing so you can start sharing your presentation. Yeah, thank you Ochi for that wonderful introduction. I will now share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, okay. So, hi again, everyone. I'm Rafael Centeno uh, from Trend Micro. So thank you for um, attending. So I hope you learn, you will learn a lot. But um, unfortunately, I will turn off my camera to uh, conserve bandwidth. Okay, so our agenda for today is different types of malware and grayware. So what is malware? Malware is short for malicious software. So malware is defined as any program that performs harmful activities to your system without the user's knowledge. So uh, user's awareness has a big role for this definition. 
files give uh, indications if the system is possibly infected by malware. A good example of a malware is a ransomware. Ransomware intends to encrypt your files without the user's consent and even lock your screen until you pay the ransom money, which is in Bitcoin. An example of a ransomware is WannaCry. So WannaCry, as you can see, it adds file extension .wcry to all the encrypted files and then lock your screen with a ransom note. Most often time, we begin to be suspicious that our system may be infected if it has observable behaviors. So examples of uh, malicious activities, first we have propagation. So it's ability to spread malware by using different methods. This is an ex example of propagation. Some, someone sent a message with unknown link and you curiously click the link. You will be unaware na magsisend ka ng same message to all your contacts. Second, we have destruction. It's the ability to destroy files and computer operation. So a good example is a blue screen. So if example, you run a file and then a blue screen pop and then you cannot uh, reboot or you cannot use your computer anymore, it means na may possible na na modify na critical part yung file na yon. Next, we have uh, unauthorized unexpected behavior. It's the ability to do something without the user's consent. So a good example is sending email without the user's knowledge, whether ring to download sa URL na hindi mo alam, or sending system information to other people. Then we go to backdoor. Backdoor is the ability to compromise target system to unknown remote access. This means that a remote user will be able to control the target system once it is infected with backdoor malware. So pwedeng kapag na na infect ka ng backdoor malware, a hacker can control your system without the user's permission. So this is an example of backdoor GUI, graphical user interface, that hackers can use to control your infected machine. So possible to remote your desktop or even open your webcams or even key logs, your keystrokes, and more. Then we go to information theft. So it's the ability to steal critical and sensitive user information. One known example is phishing emails. So ginagamit to na mga hackers to get your passwords or even your uh, credit cards information. So phishing is a cybercrime that spoofs a legitimate company to trick users para makuha nila yung mga social media passwords mo or even yung mga credit card information mo. So kapag nag, may mga ganitong klase ng emails or may ganitong klase ng uh, website ka na puntahan, if you are not sure, please um, do a second thought before you put your credentials. Then... Sir, pa paano malalaman if it is phishing? So the easiest way, but not the only way, is to read the content and check kung may mali sa content. As you can see, may mali sa spelling. So legitimate emails do not send wrong spelling emails. So for more details about phishing, we have a previous webinar about phishing. So you can search it in the internet. Next, we go to exploit. Exploit is a weakness in a computer system or program to carry out form of malicious intent. So this is the reason why most of the application asks you to update new patches to avoid being exploited. Next, we have deception. It refers to the ability to trick users into downloading malware. So this is an example of deception. Someone sends you a message that will make you curiously click the link kasi nakaka-curious yung contents niya. So if you click the link, possible na ma makuha yung mga credentials mo or possible na mag-propagate siya to your system. Then we go to hidden or stealth mechanism. It is the ability to hide behaviors from the user. Usually malware use this para to hide themselves to antivirus company or even the users. Lastly, we have digital extortion. It's the act of forcing someone to pay in, a, in exchange for st stolen cyber assets. A good example is ransomware. And another one is a blackmail 
and fishing. Usually, they do this for money. Okay, everyone, it's time for a poll question. Is this an example of phishing email? One is yes. Two is normal mail. Or three seems to be, but I'm not sure. Ochi, can you pull up the poll question? Thank you. Yep, the poll is already pulled up. So everyone, you have 25 seconds before the poll closes. Ochi, what do you think is the answer? Okay, so it's going to be a shame if I answer wrong because <laughs> I'm from <laughs> micro, right? So yeah. I'd like to say that this one is um, a phishing email because of, uh, you know, the from part of it. It's not Yahoo. So, you know, it's kind of fishy because you have two zeros instead of two O's. So that's for me. But let me end the poll. So let me see what they think. Okay. So that the percentage is, yes, it is for 84%. Normal email for 6% and 10% for I'm not sure. So yes, you are correct, Ochi. It is a phishing email. As you've mentioned, it's not Yahoo alert. It's really ya zero zero alert. So it spoofs the, the real or the legitimate company Yahoo. So it's part of a being a phishing email. Good job, Ochi. So let's continue. So let's talk about general types of malware. So we have Trojan, Virus, and then Worm. Let's talk about the world's famous I Love You Virus. So this was created by Onel de Guzman, a Filipino. So sir, paano siya tinawag na I Love You Virus? Because the attachment and the email subject is entitled I Love You. On May 4, 2000, it starts spreading via email sending. Then you ask me again, Sir, pa paano mag-infect yung I love you virus? First, deception. It makes the receiver curious dahil nga sa file name niya because of the I love you. And then, next is propagation. Dahil curious to run the file, it will send the copy to itself to all your contacts. Then lastly, we have destruction. So it overrides to different file types. So if naparan mo yung file na to, it can override uh, different types ng file sa system mo. Then another is it reaches a value of 45 million users per day. So imagine yung dami ng nasira niyang file nung 2000 and also kung ano yung mga damage to the companies. So let's go to another poll question. So what do you think is the malware type of I love you virus? Is it a virus? Is it a worm? A Trojan? Or you don't know? So Ochi, can you pull up the poll? Yep, uh, people are already answering. Oh, OK. So this time, Ochi, what do you think is the answer? I'd like to think it's a virus since the name implies that it's yeah. a virus. I but think it's a good choice. Yeah, but I'm not sure. But let's see what they think. Uh, let me end the poll for you. Okay. So, yeah, 44% for, says it's a virus. Then 22% it's a worm. Then 32% it's a Trojan. Then 2% is, I don't know. We have a um, halo halong sagot. But let's find out the answer later. But let's now let's go to virus. So what what are virus? So the keynote for viruses is to infect an insertion of malicious code. So for example, these are your files. Sir, pa paano malalaman kung infected na yung files mo? The easiest way to check is to be familiar with your files. Look at the details of your files. So look at the icons, the size, the file size, the date modified. So after infection, you can see na nag-change yung mga icons and even the date modified. So meaning there's something na ginawa yung file na yon. And then look at the file size. It became bigger. Then you ask me why. Sir, why bigger? So as I've mentioned a while ago, virus inserts or add, adds code to to propagate. So this also the reason kung bakit nagbago yung mga date modified niya. So now let's go to worm. Worm malware is self-contained program that is able to spread 
functional copies of itself to different directories of your systems. Unlike viruses, worms do not need uh, files to attach themselves. So worms often propagate through emails, network or removable drives, uh, instant messaging apps, peer-to-peer, -peer, or even social medias. What are the basic behaviors of worm? First is searching for target victim. For worm malware to propagate, this first needs to find target system to send copies of themselves. Yung pag-send ng copies depende to sa type ng worm. For example, if check nila if nakasaksak yung hard drive or USBs, or even to collect your contacts sa instant messaging apps or even your emails. Then next step is to create a copy of themselves which can be sent to other target systems. Usually, gumagamit ng tempting file names as used you see a while ago. Then, pwede rin nakazip yung file para hindi siya mablock ng emails or ng antivirus products. And then, possible din na they have two file extensions to mislead the users. Then lastly, the main goal of a worm is to spread or to propagate sa iba't ibang computer. So, common methods are attach themselves sa emails, drop copies to attach USB or hard drives, or even drop copies to shared folders or to peer-to-peer -peer applications. These are examples of uh, mass mailing worms. So, as you can see, so I love you virus is really not a virus. It's really a worm. So if you answered worm, so correct yung answers. Yun. So usually, these types of worms are sending email to all users' ad books, address books without the user's consent. So nakakode na sa kanya yung mga uh, yung pag-send ng email na nakatouch yung worm malware or even the malicious link to all your contacts to propagate. So receivers can only be infected if the attached email or the link is clicked. So some worm malware usually they send links through your messenger application, just like the picture shown. So kapag naklik mo yung links, it will download worm malwares and spread into your computer. In addition nito, possible din na magsend ng same message to all your contacts to all of your messaging applications. So if you're not aware of what is the link about, so please do not click. Then another one is a worm spreading via USB. So they make use the autoplay features of the removable drives. So these are the autoplay feature ng, uh, US, uh, ng USBs, which is using the autorun.inf. This automatically execute the malware file when the USB is plugged in into your system. So pag example, nagsaksa ka ng USB to your system or to your computer, a file will, will run automatically. The autorun.inf is the reason why it is running automatically. So what is Trojan horse malware? So based from the name itself, it, it has the similar purpose dun sa ginamit ni Achilles in a Greek mythology. The Trojan is used for a container to carry out the hidden agenda. So these are some of the, perf uh, the performers of a malware actions. So first is a drop and downloads, copies, or another malware into the system. So next one is hiding other malwares like rootkits or allow hackers to take control of your system like backdoors. Then perform destructive actions and then we have monitoring and information theft. So Trojans cannot propagate like worms but it can reach through various um, ways. For example, pwede i-drop ng ibang malware or even the downloaded uh, installer is bundled with a malware. Lalo na if you didn't download the installer in a legitimate site. So another one is um, malware posing as a normal application. For example, the icon is a Word document, a calculator, a notepad, or anything that looks normal to you. So let's talk about Trojan types. So first is um, key laggers or password stealing trojans. So this application can log your keystrokes to gather user information. 
Second, we have dropper trojans. So a dropper trojan is designed to extract and run other files for from their own code. Then we have download the trojan. So it installs another file from a remote URL or network location. Ang advantage na itong type ng malware na to is it is typically small. So you can um, send it to the email. Then if they click it, it can download the malware. So the next one is rootkits. So as I've mentioned, these trojans designed to hide other malwares para nga ma-evade nila yung antivirus detection. The next one, we have backdoor trojans. Backdoor trojans allows hackers to gain control of your system. So kapag na-infect ka ng ganitong klaseng malware, hackers can control your computer. So backdoor malware usually consists of three components. So we have server, we have clients, and then we have server configurator. So first, the server, ito yung malware na running to your target computer. Then the client is the one who's controlling the targeted computer. Then the server configuration configurator is the one that connects the server and the client. Then next is we have a denial of service. It's the type of cyber attack designed to disable or shut down disrupt a network website or a service. So usually ginagawa to ng mga mal mga hackers uh, nagsisend sila ng maraming codes or data sa targeted computer para maghang yung computer mo. Then lastly, we have destructive trojan. These types of trojan simply wants to destroy or make your system unusable or unbootable. So trojans can be defined through indicators or what we call payload. So what are payloads? Payload means ito yung final na ginagawa ng malware sa computer mo. So it is possible na they can restart your computer or ma-ransomware ka or even lock your screen or even makurap yung files mo or even stealing information to your system. Then we have blended threats. So blended threats are malware that exhibits the combined behaviors of different types of malware. So ganito na ang nakikita nowadays. The big reason is it, is con uh, it conserves energy and time for cyber criminals to, uh, to code from scratch, lalo na isa't isa lang yung mga characteristics nila. So pwede nilang pagsamahin into one program. Then the main goal of blended threat is to have a complete control of your system. So the reasons why your computer can be used to perform other malicious activities. It can also be stealing your sensitive information or pwedeng maging bridge to gain access to other computers connected to the same network. And also, because it has a lot of components, mas mahirap to detect ng antivirus or even to clean your computer. So we have two types of blended threats. So one, we have bots and botnets. So bots are computers that has infected by malware and can be controlled by cyber criminals. Usually, tinatawag tong zombies. So bots even spreads themselves by searching for vulnerabilities. Usually, yung mga ganitong types of malware, naghihintay ito ng action sa mga nagkocontrol sa kanya. Then lastly, we have web threats. So web threats are threats that uses the web to facilitate crimes like phishing, we have frauds, we have uh, links in emails or instant messaging apps or anything that uh, access the web. So here's, here is an example of uh, blended threats. So PE Shaoba uh, has the behavior of a virus which is it can infect files and even a ransomware that can ransom your computer and even coin mining. So it has many characteristics. That's why it is considered as blended threats. Next, we, con we go to grayware. So what are grayware? So grayware are applications that have annoying, und undesirable, or undisclosed behavior. So grayware applications do not fall into the three major types. So kaya siya tinawag na grayware dahil pwede siyang gamitin ng masama or as a normal tool. So it depends on the usage. So for example, of annoying and undesirable behavior may include excessive pop-ups. Then an example of undisclosed behavior is to gather information sa system mo na hindi nakalagay sa luwa. 
So, if you're asking me what is a Lua, this is a Lua. So, yun yung mga pag nag-install ka ng application, di na natin binabasa. We just agree and agree. So, cyber criminals often use this as a component to do malicious activity. They do this para hindi na sila kailangan mag, uh, mag-code from scratch and even it is easier access dahil lahat na sa internet. So, anong difference na malware and grayware? So, usually, malware and grayware usually differs in intention paano gamitin yung applications. So, these are the types of grayware. So, we have adware, then we have spyware, and then we have potentially unwanted applications. Next, we have crack or hack tools, and then we have remote access programs. Before we continue, let's have another poll question. So, have you ever thought that your computer is listening to what you're saying? So, one is yes, no, second is no, then three is I don't I didn't talk, thought of that. So, Ochi, uh, do you think your computer is listening to you? <laughs> Uh, honestly, sometimes I do because, for example, I browse something on Instagram and then <laughs> I go to Facebook. That exact product is like advertised on Facebook. So I think I'm not alone in this, but let's see what they think about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sharing you can your show the person now. page. Yeah. Oh, a lot of, a lot answer yes. 83%. Then 10% no. And then 8% is I didn't th- thought of that. So you may be answered yes because whenever you, as Ochi said, na when you talk to someone, then an advertisement pop up to a web browser even in your shopping uh, online shopping apps. So let's go to the next topic to give you a better idea. So what is Adware? Adware is an application that displays advertis- advertising banners. Then it generates a pop-up windows or hot links sa mga web pages. It can also monitor your browsing habits. So this is the reason why sometimes when you go to different websites, may mga nakikita kang related sa mga previous research mo. Lalo na yung kunyari nag-uusap kayo. Tapos syempre isa-search sa internet yun to, to know how much or to know more about the, the product. And maybe the, that a website has a uh, monitoring capability. That's why it is um, advertising the same or related to that search um, products. So, ito rin yung reason, but you think na you, that sometimes your computer is listening to you. So, examples of adware, we have Zango. Zango is an adware company that has the history of monitoring internet browsing activities and displaying targeted advertisements. Then we have a uh, Comet Cursor. So it adds a browsing toolbar and generate pop-ups advertisement and even create desktop shortcuts to advertise. So let's go to Spyware. Spyware is a pro- program that monitors and gathers information for different purposes. So Spyware uh, program usually runs in the background with their activities transparent to most users. So commonly, stolen information uh, example net is um, system information, financial information, and even your use, personal user information. So examples of spyware. So some toolbars can be used to collect information about your browsing habits and even your login credentials. So possible na makolect ng mga spywares yung mga nakasave na credentials mo to your web browser. So might as well think about it before you save your uh, credentials sa mga browsers. Then we go to potentially unwanted application or PUA. So it refers to the application installed in your devices that may pose high risk or have annoying impact to your system or to your security or privacy. So sometimes it, it, it may attributes in consuming your um, devices com- computing resources. So it may be unwanted because even if you install the, the the application, most often and not, PUAS do not clearly and completely states their function and purposes. So ang pinagkaiba nito sa malware is it is created by legitimate and illegitimate software publishers. So if you ask me, paano siya malalaman kung PUA? So sometimes, bundling. 
So bundling is a, a bundling from one program with another program. Lalo na yung if you download a, a program and then you got another program with it na hindi mo naman siya kinekailangan. So that is what you call bundling. So another one is exaggerated advertisement. So these are applications with too much pop-ups. Then we have uh, information collection. So application that collects information without the user's consent. So example of a PUA or potentially unwanted application is a driver updater. So minsan with the written malicious ng file, when you look the file into your computer, it is not existing. Yun ang example na exaggerated bogus. So this is used to panic users para bumili sila ng service nyo. Then next, we have speed test. So kunwari your computer is running slow, pero kapag nag-check ka manually, the result is not the same. Then lastly, we have um, optimizer pro. So after execution ng program, uh, before you can view the results, you need to buy the license key, which is um, opposite sa legitimate applications, which is you need to buy first the license key to fully use the application. Then we have hacking tool. So hacking tools are used to break computer security measures. Usually, ito ginagamit ng mga pen testers to check vulnerability of your company system. So after checking their company's uh, vulnerability, your company IT should fix the vulnerabilities to avoid being compromised. So possible na hackers can use this to access confidential or corporate systems and even steal your data. So examples of hacking tools, we have this. So these tools can be used by either IETs or hackers. So depende na lang siya sa intention, kaya siya nagpo-fall into grayware categories. Then we have cracking tools. So a program that is illegally breaking various copy protection and registration techniques. So usually this is used for software piracy. So examples of software piracy are key generator. So key generators are used para makapag-bypass sa mga license keys. Then lastly, we have um, remote access tool. So these are the tools created to enable remote admin uh, to a legitimate, with a legitimate purpose. So however, it can be obtained from a remote system without being tracked. So if a uh, hacker uses this, pwede niya ma-access yung mga computers mo remotely. So examples of uh, RAT tools. So we have uh, TeamViewer. And lastly, we have AnyDesk. So thank you. Uh, that wraps up my um, presentation and I hope na may ma-learn kayo and hopefully next time mag-attend ulit kayo. Ochi, I'm done with my presentation. All right. So let me just stop, start sharing my screen and then we can go ahead for uh, our Q&A. So thank you, Raf, for the very informative presentation. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them at the Q&A section and at the chat box so that we can um, prioritize and answer them correctly. So wrap for your first question, if you're ready. First question is, does formatting the flash drive uh, delete worms or can uh, formatting the flash drive delete worms? Um... Yeah, formatting the flash drive will delete the worm kasi it will delete all the files inside the flash drives. So, pati yung mga worms na yun, nadidelete na. So, but however, pagka sinaksak mo ulit siya into a computer or into some uh, into a device na mayroon pa ring worm, it can possibly na bumalik yung files na yun. So, possibly na to avoid um, attaching it to a compromised na device. All right. Okay. So again, guys, uh, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please drop them off at the Q&A uh, uh, Q tab towards the bottom and not at the chat section because there are a lot of people currently um, occupying our chat screen. So we won't be able to see um, any of those. Next question wrap is, um, so do you mean to say that our computers are not 100% safe even if we have an antivirus? Um, yeah. Uh, I can say that because ano eh, maraming pagbabago. There's always an innovation. 
So every time na nagkakaroon ng innovation, there's a new type of malware. So um, but we are doing our best as a AV company or AV uh, engineers para to um, para maka-cope up sa kanila. All right. I think uh, that does answer your question. Um, next question. We do have a lot of questions coming in. Like earlier, we only had 33. Now we have about 140. So next question is, uh, where do hackers get the list of recipients if virus will be done via email? Uh, sorry again. Uh, where do hackers get the list of recipients if the virus will be done via email? Ah, uh, okay. So it's um this type of malware is worm malware. So yung capability ng worm malware is they gather first the the uh, address book ng ng compromised na computer. So they gather yung yung your own compromised na address book. So yun yung mga sinesenda nila ng mga copies ng worms. Okay. All right. So I hope that answers the question. Um, next is this is from Porcero Perez. He's asking, prone pa po sa virus yung pagda-download sa uTorrent. I think this is very useful because a lot of people are actually asking about this question. They actually have voted that. So prone ba sa virus yung pagda-download sa uTorrent? Uh, I think so, because um, some malwares, um, they bundled with other um, legitimate application or even yung mga, down, mga applications na usually din download nyo sa mga torrent sites. So, but not all, ha? So, possible na yung ma-download mo is with, ano lang, with uh, bundling with uh, malicious software. So, ingat-ingat lang, pero not all. All right. Okay. So, Processo, I hope that answers your question. Next one is, um, this is from Jonathan Sadweste. His question is, what's the difference between cross-site scripting infection from worms? What will be the best practice in protecting such incidents? So, uh, cross-site kasi is more of the web. But um, uh, worms, usually, these are files files yung ano so it has uh, medyo different siya in a way na kung paano yung attacking mangyayari so more of uh, worms are um, applications na when you click it will spread into your system but um, cross site scripting is more of the uh, um, attack yun sa, sa web so that's maybe the difference with ano with cross site scripting and worms all right. Hi, thank you. Um, I hope that answers your question. Next question is from Christian Genesis Unser. The question is, what is the most difficult malware to deal with? Um, that is a very tough question. But uh, usually, um, for me, so possible yung mga uh, kung, debugging, uh, kung debugging siya, most probably yung mga ano um viruses kasi possibly nito uh, it can um destroy your files eh pero kung usually um what uh, yung mga bago ngayon pwedeng ransomware kasi it it can lock your screen and even to uh, encrypt your files so pag na-encrypt yung files mo hindi mo na siya mai de decrypt until na uh, ma decrypt siya mismo ng mga nag-ransomware uh, authors all right. So according to Rap, Christian, it is ransomware. I hope that answers your question. Uh, for our next one, this is from Vincent Antivo. The question is, are there viruses that attack antivirus programs? Um, um, I'm not really sure about that. Pero may mga um, na encounter na kami na pinapatay nila yung mga antivirus ng mga, ano, ng mga uh, users. But attacking the antivirus itself is i don't think i've um na encounter ko na yan. all right so uh vincent i hope that answers your question the next one is from john leonil calibuso the question is how will you know if the website you're going is infected or how do you know if the website that you're currently using is infected yeah uh for that is actually being familiar with the website so possible the HTTP or the website itself is different from the usual website. For example, let's use the um, Facebook. So if example, yung Facebook, it's F 
and then at sign then c book c e book so di ba parang it's a bit sketchy so possible na yun yung mga types of uh, website na hindi talaga legitimate but um to check na kung paano maging malicious yun, you have to uh, debug or you have to check the source mismo. All right, thank you. Next question. I'm just going to keep rolling through because you have a ton of questions coming in. Next question is from Tom Rezel Cruz. The question is, is Windows Defender really helpful? So we're getting a lot of this. Is Windows Defender really helpful or is it enough uh, to protect your laptop alone or your desktop alone? Uh, I think Windows Defender is good. Kasi nakaka-block siya ng mga ibang malware. So, but as I've mentioned a while ago, uh, malware authors usually innovate it. They do things na um, hindi mo maisip na pwede palang gawin yun. So, but uh, yung mga typical and yung mga old na or yung mga nangyari na, possible na mag-detect na ng mga Windows Defender. All right, thank you, uh, Tom Rosal Cruz. I hope that answers your question. Uh, the next question is from ha Hazel Venzon. Question is, are antiviruses and VPNs still relevant in today's normal? Uh, yeah, actually, um, kailangan talaga na antivirus ng computer mo to, to make you being protected. Pero kung nyari, if you're not naman using it to connect into the internet or you're just using it alone sa bahay mo, it's okay if you have your own ano, Windows Defender lang ganun. And then if using the VPN, I think it's um, useful para sa mga ano, sa mga connecting to different sites na ayaw mong makita ka na doon ka nag-co-connect uh, or even yung mga uh, to connect ka sa ibang sites na hindi siya po pwede sa ano sa region. All right. So, uh, Hazel, I hope that answers your question. Okay, this one uh, next. Very helpful for me also if you get to answer this. Um, do Apple products like MacBook, um, iPads, iPhones need an antivirus since they're known for being antivirus or sorry, virus-free units unlike Androids and Microsoft OS? Yeah, we always hear this misconception that we have a, if you have an Apple product, they're usually virus-free. So is that true? Or not? <laughs> uh, nung un, uh, that's a good question. No? Nung una kasing nilabas yung uh, Mac, it is virus free because wala pang ginagawang ano eh, ng virus noon but now as i've mentioned uh, malware authors innovates and creates things nga na hindi mo maiisip eh. so they make use of the vulnerabilities or the things na merong uh, pupwedeng i-attack yung yung mac lalo na dati kasi bago yun eh. so ngayon hindi na siya bago so they use uh, they created viruses for mac so, but uh, yeah, the, we have um, antivirus for Max. So it's okay if you download also antivirus for Max. All right. So that's uh, for <laughs> Hazel, I think. Yeah, it's not. It's not oh, no, Hazel, virus Arnel. free. Na. It's not right. virus free. <laughs> All right. So Arnel, apparently, it's not virus free. It's not true. Probably just before, but not anymore. So next question is. Oh, this one is very interesting. This is from Isaiah Benin. The question is, is there a threat to the login options under sign in with Facebook, sign in with Apple, or sign in with Google, etc.? Because we have a lot of websites or sometimes apps that, you know, have those option logins, right? So is there a threat if we use those logins? Which which one? You, uh, what what kind of login? Um, below, for example, you were to sign up to a website, diba? Sa baba, there is sign in with Facebook or sign in with Apple, ah, yeah, sign in yeah. with Google. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the only thing is, kapag yung gumawa nun is a, uh, is a bad website or parang hacking yung, nahack ka yung website na yun, possible na compromise nila yung mga ano, yung mga connected dun sa site na yun. So, for example, for example, uh, Mobile Legends, diba? kapag uh, connected siya to a Facebook account or something na um, any uh, website na connected sa ibang social media sa account mo or ibang website din na meron mga credentials mo kapag nahack yung yung ano na yun, yung website na yun, possible but not 100% sure na po pwede nilang makuha yung yung or po pwede silang mag uh, jump to the connected na sites 
Okay, all right. So apparently if uh, the app or the website that you guys are going to is compromised, then, you know, they get your information. So Isaiah, I hope that answers your question. Next is from Edgardo Cruz. The question is, is it safe to use uh, VPN? Uh, yeah, usually VPN is used para to mask your um, IP address. So for example, na you are uh, debugging or you are um, a AV company para hindi ka ma para na hindi ma compromise yung sites mo o yung yung computer mo. Usually they use VPN para to protect you more. All right. Okay. So I hope that answers the question again. Next question is is it possible that spyware can install key loggers in your computer remotely or online? This question is from Lerwin Gersaniba. So is it possible that spyware can install key loggers in your computer remotely or online? Um, spyware is a uh, key logger is a ano, is an example of a spyware. So kapag na install na yung application, usually yung application mismo yung key logger na i-install mo. It's not the way na parang may isang application tapos mag-install siya ng key logger. Malware na yun. It's not a spyware. So that's why yun nga yung difference niya. It's about the the intention. Eh. But if it's just the application itself na key logger, it's considered a spyware na. All right. So thank you. I hope uh, that answers your question, Lorwin. Next question is... Are there malwares that can survive even if the HDD is wiped multiple times? That is from Adzar Musa. Again, well, sorry for the question. Um, are there malwares that can survive even if the HDD is wiped multiple times? Uh, um, sa, sa hard drive mismo, walang, walang, pag na clean mo na yun, it will be clean na talaga. Pero if you, um, if you attach it to a compromised device, possible na for example usually yon worms usually yon mag uh, the drop ulit siya ng copy dun sa mga hard drives so yun nakiclean mo na siya pero kapag compromise na yung kinokonektan mo hin, ma maano ulit siya ma, madudumihan siya ulit or mako-compromise siya ulit okay all right so best be careful of the devices that you connect your HDD to all right thank you next one is uh, from Jeff Tabuzo is it true that antivirus software slow down your operating system? <laughs> if yes, why? Um, I'm not sure about that. Pero siguro it's about nung sa ano eh, running na sa system mo. Siguro hindi na siya kaya ng computer mo possibly kaya siya bumabagal. Pero if you have good specs na computer mo, so I think na kahit na ilang AV products pa yan or kahit anong application ito, bumo dyan it will be okay. Okay, so um, it's all a matter of the specs of your machine. Yeah, I think so. Oh. All right, so Jeff, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, I agree with one of the comments. It consumes hardware resources. That's true. Next one is, uh, wait, let me see. Is adware legal or sh uh, should they uh, have cyber criminal liabilities? Because look at those. Are they the ones who... Okay, I'm getting confused by the question. Sorry. Um, let's just go first with... Is adware legal? This is from Dan, Justin, Olfato. Mm, that's a good question. Ano? So, is adware legal? Yeah, I think so. Dahil meron silang... Uh, yung Lua, yung license ano, agreement. Eh. So, you agree kung ano yung nakasulat sa application. But if... Um, uh, I think yung sketchy siya and... Pwede kasi siyang gamitin sa uh, sa as a um, component ng mga malware but it depends really on the intention eh. So pwede siyang legal lang. Kasi pwedeng ano lang normal tool 'yun na ginagamit sa office, sa school or ng 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 mga kakilala mo. So possibly na legal lang siya. All right. So okay, it is legal then, Justin. So I hope that is, or I hope that um, calms your mind and <laughs> puts it to rest. Okay. So let's go with uh, next one. Oh, this is um, a question that we get asked a lot of times whenever we have webinars. This is from Adrian Ives Marcelo. The question is: Is it possible to hack a hacker? <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
if you are that good, pwede mong ma-hack yung hacker. If you are that good. Kasi usually, ano sila eh, parang they protect themselves din eh. Like antivirus companies, they protect themselves din eh. Parang, parang ano lang yan, parang uh, mataya-taya lang. So if if you can see them or meron kang connection dun sa 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 network nila you can hack them if you are that good all right okay so uh, if you're probably someone like i'm not sure if mr robot is very realistic but you guys have seen that yeah you know? parang ganun, so, parang ganun, parang ganun. yes if you guys probably have mr robot like capabilities then you probably can yeah, but yeah anyway uh, we have a couple of uh, questions from Facebook. Okay, so first question from the people from Facebook. Also, good afternoon to our listeners and um, joiners from Facebook. Question is, um, is it possible that uh, antiviruses also have disadvantages for the users? So for someone who is working for an, for an antivirus company, do you think it also has disadvantages from the users? This question is from... Um, Michael or Mikael Garcia? Um, I think yung disadvantage lang ng antivirus is if hindi siya ma-detect yung mga bago. Pero aside from that, it's very advantageous sa mga users eh, kasi it will protect you. So if you if you have antivirus, so it's always protecting you. So wala siyang usually na ano. Siguro ano lang, yung the, ano, the question kanina, if bumabagal yung computer mo. Possible yun. Baka kasi hindi na kaya ng system mo or ng computer mo. Kaya bumabagal. Pero aside from that, very advantageous yung merong antivirus. Okay. All right. Next, uh, another question from one of our Facebook audiences. We have from Andy and Huertas. Um, are there any law that penalizes internet viruses such as Trojans or, or malwares? Will this fall under the umbrella of cybercrime? There, uh, I'm not sure about the ano, penalized na law. Pero I think cybercrime kasama yung mga malwares. Kasi yung mga um, malware o mga ginagawa ng mga malware authors usually, ano yun eh, uh, malware naman yung gina, kinecreate nila, di ba? Tapos sila mismo, if nahuli sila, they will be punished uh, under cybercrime laws. So possible, uh all right. Okay. Next one is also from Facebook, uh, from Arwen Ray. Pag ba encrypted na po ang file mo, then matamaan ng ransomware, makukuha pa ba yung info sa encrypted file ng attacker? Ah, that's a good question. No? So, um, um, ransomware first checks yung uh, file extension mo. So, usually they check specific file extensions. For example, that text, that JPG, um, that um, PNG or anything na, na gusto niyang i-encrypt. And then after i-encrypt niya, maglalagay siya ng sarili niyang file extension. For example, yung WannaCry kanina, that's that WCry. So, meron na siyang another file extension. So, pag ma-encrypt ka na ng another ransomware, hindi niya na makikita yung previously encrypted na file mo. Kasi makikita niya na yung um, that WCry, which is hindi naman yun yung kasama niya sa mga uh, i-encrypt niya. Alright. Thank you. I hope that clarifies things for our Facebook uh, audience. That was that question was from Arwen Raypag. Oh, I'm not sure about the name, but <laughs> okay, I hope that answers your question. Next question is also from Facebook. This is from Patrick Jones Miss Lang. The question is are there any viruses, worms, or trojans that attack the system BIOS or firmware aside from the hard drive? Hmm. Um, I think yung mga hardware na meron talagang um, na meron talagang kasamang hard uh, na may kasamang malware. So mga MBR malware. All right. Um, next is. Okay, this is from, um, I think a lot, if you guys are still using flash drives, you can relate to this. This question is from Isabel Colina. She's asking, I have a flash drive with a corrupted file, but when I tried to delete that file, it wouldn't delete. I'm assuming that it got infected by a virus. Is there a way to remove it? Um, siguro yung pag-remove nun, most probably ano, um, to clean your whole, ano, your whole USB. 
So if hindi pa din, possibly ano, um, that file is um, part of the ano, the USB na hindi mo siya madedelete. All right, thank you, uh, Isabel. I hope that answers your question. Next is, um, how do we know if there is a spyware installed in our devices and how do we flush it out? That is from Roma Rich Brian Verga. Okay. So how do we know if there is a spyware? Yeah, for example, kasi ng mga spyware, like uh, Trojan, uh, mga ano, ay for example, ng mga spyware, mga key laggers, di ba? Or even yung mga toolbars mo. So for example, uh, sa website mo, sa Google Chrome mo usually, di ba, Google ang ano na, ang uh, default nun eh. So kapag nag-search ka, usually nun, mag-iiba yung ano, yung yung search engine mo. So possible na meron kang ano, um, grayware sa system mo. It's not only um, spyware, possibly din ibang klaseng grayware. Pero yun lang yung mga ways eh. Kasi usually, ano siya, hindi mo siya nakikita sa system mo. Unless na lang na familiar ka talaga sa system mo na, uy, parang may ibang file na to, hindi ko alam kung saan to galing. Parang ganun. All right. So, thank you for answering that one, Rap. Very informative. Uh, Romarich, I hope that answers your question. Um, next one is from Arwin Deputo. The question is, how to prevent DDoS attacks? Uh, DDoS attack is um, being ano, prevented lang siya pagka na protect mo yung vulnerability na system mo. So you have, for example, na ano, patch yung system mo. Yun, para hindi ka ma-DDoS, parang i-ano mo lang, protect mo lang yung vulnerabilities ng system mo. All right. All right. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Next one is uh, from John Patrick. The question is, can I edit the codes of a virus that enters my computer? Hmm. Very, <laughs> very advanced. So mm -hmm. he's asking, can he edit the codes of a virus that enters his computer? Oh, um, possible naman. Kung marunong kang mag-edit ng file, possible yun. So possible din na pwede mong edit yung virus na nakuha mo. Pero kailangan mo ng, ano, ng, ng skills or ng tools, right tools, para ma-edit yun. Kasi if not, then you accidentally execute the file, so ma-infect ka ulit. Okay. All right. So, John Patrick, just make sure that if you want to try it on your own, uh, be cautious and listen to, um, you know, the precautions that Rap mentioned earlier. And, uh, okay, I think this one is very interesting because I'm seeing a lot of uh, this on Twitter. This question is from Emmanuel Manuel. The question is, how do you think people who sell cheap premium Netflix, Hulu, and Spotify accounts get such account? Is it a form of hacking? Um, I'm not sure about the term hacking yun. Pero hindi pa kasi ako nakaka-encounter nun eh. Pero I think na kung meron silang sinesend na, ano ba yun, may sarili na siyang credentials or ikaw pa rin yung gagawa. Kasi um, credentials na bibigay nila sa'yo for a cheaper price, usually it's in the internet. So, pero if you're creating a new, your own na credentials, possible na na siguro may discount lang sila nakuha talaga sa mga ganong sites. Mm, it's ano daw, 30 pesos uh, per month on a Spotify premium account. The ones that I'm seeing on Twitter, uh, they get provided like um, a random login and then ah. the password is also provided to them. So yung mga ganun, usually nah nahanap naman sa, in nakikita sa internet. Possible na meron silang uh, parang forum or something sa internet na na meron ng hack previously na ganito na kunyari for example na in Netflix may previously na hack na na ano na account tapos sabi nila na tinry nila yung credentials tas gumana so pwede nilang ibigay yon as a cheaper price pero kunyari iyon nga pwede rin kasi gamitin ng marami yun di ba so bibigay nila yun ng sa maraming tao in a cheaper price dito na ba sila Yes, that's true. A lot of uh, our audiences are commenting on it, like cheaper Spotify just won 30 pesos for the entire year. <laughs> that's uh, wow. quite cheap. That's quite uh, cheap, right? Very cheap, yun. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, we're almost done. So I'll give you one last question. Um, let me just get from probably Facebook. Um, let me just sort through our Facebook 
Okay, so this question is from Facebook, from Bingbong Segarino. The question is, what type of malware does crypto mining fall under? Thank wow, you. Wow, that's a nice question. Ano? It depends. Kasi it's probably um, grayware lang siya, crypto mining. Kasi nga, um, you're just using yung system mo. Pero kasi some, some uh, malware actors or mga cyber criminals, they use it as a Trojan. So, paano siya nagiging Trojan? So, di ba meron siyang Bitcoin wallet? So, for example, meron akong, applica- uh, meron akong program na meron siyang um, crypto mining. So, isi-send ko yun sa mga, for example, sa gusto kong ma-infect. No? So, gagamitin ko yung mga resources nila and I will use their um, computer resources. Then, I will put my own Bitcoin wallet. So I'm using your uh, compu- computing resources then I will get the money. So that's uh, falling sa, sa, sa Trojan. Pero if you're using it as your own tool, it's just a grayware. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, Rhea, for answering all of those questions. We actually still have a ton of unanswered questions, 722 to be exact. But unfortunately, we won't be able to answer everything. But um, thank you, everyone, for this very enjoyable session. I think this is one of the most fun sessions I've moderated. But um, we have to wrap up the session because time is almost up. Uh, before we end the presentation, we're also inviting everyone to register to Decode twenty. 20, elevate rapidly, seamlessly, and securely. This year's theme encourages IT professionals to elevate or improve their cybersecurity skill sets and use this as their weapon to securely transform their organization as they improve their defenses. IT professionals are invited to register to this three-day virtual free conference. Students are also encouraged to register as well for our student sidetrack session. Kindly go to https forward slash decode ph.com to register. So HTTPS meaning it's secured. You guys don't have to worry about that. So again, thank you to our speakers and our subject matter experts, Lalum Victoria from our threat response team for that very awesome and informative presentation. I'd like to remind everyone that our next webinar topic would be introduction to email threats and uh, security attacks. This would be on November 12, 2020, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. same time. Please visit our Facebook pages, Trend Micro Careers Philippines, and click right for additional announcements. The key takeaways for this session and access to the recordings will also be posted there. So for those who are asking where you guys can find the presentations and answers to everything that we have just discussed today, please visit our Facebook pages. And uh, please like and follow uh, those pages to stay updated. For the survey and feedback, kindly take a snapshot of this QR code and answer the survey after leaving the session to get your certificate of attendance. Again, to those who are asking how to get your certificate of attendance, just click on or take a photo of this post webinar survey and answer it after the session and you guys are good to go. So again, uh, thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Thank you again, Rap, for the very informative presentation and goodbye. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you. Bye.